little simple science, which is designed to help you understand what was going on in my brain biologically on the morning of the stroke. If you ever wondered what it might feel like to have a stroke, then the morning of the stroke chapters are for you. Here, I take you on a very unusual journey into the step-by-step -step deterioration of my cognitive abilities as viewed through the eyes of a scientist. As the hemorrhage in my brain grew larger and larger, I relate the cognitive deficits I was experiencing to the underlying biology. As a neuroanatomist, I must say that I learned as much about my brain and how it functions during that stroke as I had in all my years of academia. By the end of that morning, my consciousness shifted into a perception that I was at one with the universe. Since that time, I have come to understand how it is that we are capable of having a mystical or metaphysical experience relative to our brain anatomy. If you know someone who has had a stroke or some other type of brain trauma, then the recovery chapters may prove to be an invaluable resource. Here, I share the chronological journey of my recovery, including over 50 tips about things I needed or didn't need in order to recover completely. I hope you will share this information with anyone who may benefit. Finally, my stroke of insight defines what this stroke has taught me about my brain. At this point, you will realize that this book is not really about stroke. More accurately, the stroke was the traumatic event through which the insight came. This book is about the beauty and resiliency of our human brain because of its innate ability to constantly adapt to change and recover function. Ultimately, it's about my brain's journey into my right hemisphere's consciousness, where I became enveloped in a deep inner peace. I have resurrected the consciousness of my left hemisphere in order to help others achieve that same inner peace, without having to experience stroke. I hope you enjoy the journey. Chapter 1. Jill's Pre-Stroke Life I am a trained and published neuroanatomist. I grew up in Terre Haute, Indiana. One of my older brothers, who is only 18 months older than I, was diagnosed with the brain disorder schizophrenia. He was officially diagnosed at the age of 31, but showed obvious signs of psychosis for many years prior to that. During our childhood, he was very different from me in the way he experienced reality and chose to behave. As a result, I became fascinated with the human brain at an early age. I wondered how it could be possible that my brother and I could share the same experience but walk away from the situation with completely different interpretations about what had just happened. This difference in perception, information processing, and output motivated me to become a brain scientist. My undergraduate academic journey began at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana in the late 1970s. Because of my interactions with my brother, I was hungry to understand what normal was at a neurological level. At that time, the subject of neuroscience was such a young field that it was not yet offered on the IU campus as a formal area of specialization. By studying both physiological psychology and human biology, I learned as much as I could about the human brain. My first real job in the world of medical science turned out to be an enormous blessing in my life. I was hired as a lab technician at the Terre Haute Center for Medical Education, THCME, which is a branch of the Indiana University School of Medicine hosted on the campus of Indiana State University, ISU. My time was evenly divided between the Medical Human Gross Anatomy Lab and the Neuroanatomy Research Lab. For two years, I was immersed in medical education, and while mentored by Dr. Robert C. Murphy, I fell in love with dissecting the human body. Bypassing the master's degree, I spent the next six years officially enrolled in the ISU Department of Life Science PhD program. My course load was dominated by the first year medical school curriculum, and my research specialty was neuroanatomy under the guidance of Dr. William J. Anderson. In 1991, I received my doctorate and felt competent to teach human gross anatomy, human neuroanatomy, and histology at the medical school level. In 1988, during my time at the THCME and ISU, my brother was officially diagnosed with schizophrenia. Biologically, he is the closest thing to me that exists in the universe. I wanted to understand why I could take my dreams and connect them to reality and make my dreams come true. What was different about my brother's brain such that he could...